Fern fans, we are going to do a video today explaining what heel is, or what the heel position is, and how to start teaching it. Now, it's, there's quite a few different steps to the way I do it, so I'm going to use Dolly first to explain the few steps, and then I'm going to get Fern out of the cage and we're going to start teaching her, hopefully. It may not go to plan, but I'm going to show you the, the, the way to start it, so we'll get Dolly first. Dolly, heel. So when I say heel to a dog, that's what I expect. I want her uh, uh, heel. I want her head to be level with my left leg. Not right leg, left leg. And it's always left leg. For me, it can be whatever you want. Heel isn't a word to be used when the dog's ahead of you pulling you to mean stop pulling. Heel is a position that you want the dog to be in. And then whenever my left leg goes, she should follow. And if I stop, she should stop. If I turn, she should turn. Good girl. Good girl. Now you only need to, well, eventually when they train, you should only have to say it once to them. You should tell them what you expect, and until you give them a different instruction, they should heal. And it's up for you, up to you to enforce that. Now, with a dog, a dog does dog doesn't know it's got a back end and a front end. Hey, heel. Good heel. Good girl. A dog doesn't know it's got a back end and a front end. A dog just thinks it's a dog. And a dog will go that way or turn around. It doesn't realise it can go backwards like this. Or forwards like that with its front end and its back end independent of each other. It just thinks it can go backwards and forwards. So you've got to show it that it can. And until you show it that it can, it'll never learn. So imagine if a dog goes down like a very thin passage between uh, two chairs or something. It, the only way it can get out is by going backwards. That's the only time it'll, it'll do that until you teach it. So what we want, once the dog knows that, once we've taught it that, is wherever we... Hey, heel. Good demonstration of a disobedient dog. Wherever we go, the dog will be able to turn its body independently and um, manipulate that, and we can manipulate that. So, for example, it can go all the way around us that way, but it can also move backwards because we've shown Dolly how to. We can go forwards, and we can shuffle backwards. We can also... So, um, yeah, we, we, we need to teach a dog how to be able to move its back end and its front end independently. And that's quite a difficult, or not difficult, it's quite a um, complex series of movements and you've got to build up to them. Yep. And when I call a dog to heel, I want it to go past me and then come back like she just did then. So that's part of the steps which we're going to teach her. Um, now, heel isn't to be used to stop a dog from pulling on a lead, heel is just a position that you want the dog in and if she knows that, then she should never deviate from that. So we're going to put her away now, I'm going to get Fern out, I'm going to explain how we start that process off. Good. So you can see she's all jumping around all over the place, she's seven months, it's January 2021. And I've not really started teaching her this yet because of how jumpy around she is. But she's been really responsive this past week because I've been spending, we've been at home and we spent a lot more time with it. So there are two things I'm going to start to do to teach her what I want. So when I say heel, if she's in front of me, I want her to come behind me, turn around, and then come to heel like that. So we need to teach her that. So we're going to use a food as usual. going to reward this nasty jumping behaviour. But what I want her to, you, to learn is that from, yeah, from being in front of me, it's good and she gets a reward if she goes behind my left hand side and then comes to there. So we're going to do that with food. I'm just going to model that. And she gets the food. Once she's gone behind me, turned around and is standing at my heel, that's where she gets it. And then once she knows that, we're going to add a word. 
hvem sagde her? That's what we're going to do, that's step one, just to teach the dog to make it nice and fancy. Good girl, good girl, good girl. That bit there doesn't teach the dog that it's got a front end and a back end and that you can move them independently. That's just to make it look a bit tidier than when I say, so when I say heel it looks tidy as she comes into position. So that doesn't teach you anything apart from it. It's good being here. I get loads of nice things when I'm stood with my head next to my dad's left knee. Uh, now it doesn't have to be left knee for you guys, you can use whatever you want. The next step to teach her to be able to move her back end independently, like that, or like that, I use something for the dog to stand on. So in the past I've always used a, a little square floor tile or wall tile because I've kept one handy and you can just get it out. It, it's different textures, colours, feelings from the floor so she knows when she's on it. And what we want to do is encourage the dog's front legs onto this. Now she's never done it before. The noise of it, I'm sure she's going to push it around the floor and the noise of it might startle her. And she also thinks it's food. She knows the sound it means dinner time. So um, she might get a bit crackers. So for, straight away, she's not going to put feet on there. We've got to build towards that. So every little step, if she's scared of it and she takes a step towards it, we're going to reward that. If she comes straight to it straight away, it doesn't mean any rewarding. But every step that she makes in building towards her front two legs being on this, we're going to reward because that's the start of the process. So we'll see how we go. So we're going to have to shape it with the food or manipulate it. Good girl. So did you hear the sound like she kicked the ball? Her foot was touching the ball. And that's a step towards it. So she gets a, a reward for that. Let me start again. Good girl. So she kicked it again and foot touched it. And it won't be long before she associates. When I touch that with my feet, I get a reward. Good girl. Good girl. Now if you do any kind of clicker training, what you would do, only if the dog's established a pattern what a clicker means, every time it touches it or moves towards it, click, feet, up. We're not using a clicker, we're just rewarding it. So if you're going to reward it, you've got to reward it straight away. Good girl, good girl. So that's all we're going to do for now, we're just going to keep doing that and eventually she will learn, and it won't take long at all, that my feet touching this get me a reward, then we can build on that, she can learn that my feet being on this will get me a reward, and eventually what we want, and we'll start shaping it over the next few days or week, is her four, four legs or front paws on the ball, and then I'm going to manipulate her to keep them on the ball and move around like this. That way she's going to learn to keep a back end, uh, sorry, not to keep, that way she's going to learn that a back end and a front end can move independently. And from there, you can do a lot more manipulation with, with the dog's position. So that's a starter. Um, it looks very silly. It, she will really learn that quickly and build on it, same way with Dolly. And it's the foundation, so it's not uh, a state to be skipped if you want the dog to be able to, or you to be able to manipulate the dog's movement. Um, it's something, it's a foundation for the, this whole thing and a load of sort of doggy dancing or any kind of um, obedience training with the dog. It's the foundation, so don't skip it, don't miss it, spend a lot of time on it now and it'll, everything else will be a little bit easier in the long run. So we'll keep on it, you start and keep on it and we'll post some updates soon.